Hey guys, Dr. Davin Lim, board certified laser dermatologist. Today's topic is how to manage sensitive skin. Um, it's one of the most search, I guess, uh, search conditions there is on YouTube and also on Google. Um, I'll tell you the secrets as to how dermatologists manage sensitive skin. So the prevalence of sensitive skin is actually increasing over the last three decades. Uh, studies in the 1980s show that 40% of patients actually report that they have sensitive skin. However, the latest study in 2009 show that actually 68, nearly 70% of both men and women report to have sensitive skin. Sensitive skin is very complex because it can change with various seasons. So it would be winter, most skin sensitivities occur in winter, but sometimes in summer as well. So seasonal changes, it can also change in your part of your life. So you may have, for example, atopic dermatitis or eczema when you're younger, but you grow out of it as you grow older, only to have more rosacea and sunspots. And also, sensitive skin can actually change with the products you use over time. So let's get into it. I'll give you five do's and five don'ts. We'll keep it simple, and then I'll talk about the causes of sensitive skin. So the first thing is that <laughs> cleansing. Obviously, you have to clean your skin, but don't do it so frequently because water can be an irritant. And if you do cleanse your skin, use a simple cleanser. Uh, dermatologists frequently recommend things like QV, uh, QV sensitive skin, or even Cetaphil gentle wash. Yes, I know they do contain some parabens and some preservatives uh, and some surfactants. However, it's in a very low amount compared to normal cleansers. So first thing, cleanse, but keep it simple. Twice a day, limit it to what, twice a day at most. Second thing, sunscreens. If you're gonna choose a sunscreen, there'll be a physical blocker not a chemical blocker. So chemical blockers are things like um, avobenzone, cinemates, and other chemicals. Physical blockers include things like titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. These are more inert in your skin and usually won't cause much of a reaction. So remember, physical blockers over chemical blockers. Number three, moisturizers. And once again, keep moisturizers very simple. Read the ingredients at the back. Try to go for fragrance-free moisturizers. Last week we talked about hyaluronic acid and why it can be good for your skin. Hyaluronic acid is an inert molecule. So in other words, your immune system doesn't recognize it as foreign. So HA creams or HA um, serums now are much more affordable compared to what they were 20 to 30 years ago. So if you're gonna use a moisturizer, keep it simple, very little in the way of actives. The fourth thing we talk about is how to incorporate actives. So if you have sensitive skin, start off with something like a vitamin B before retinol or vitamin C, because vitamin C with ascorbic acid, it can cause a little bit of stinging. So start off with something like a B3 niacinamide type um, uh, serum or cream and increase as tolerated. The next thing you do is actually add the vitamin A as tolerated. I would not go for prescribed vitamin A. So no retinoids, I'll go for something like a retinol. 0.5% retinol, Obagi makes really good products and so do Environ. So start off very slow. The fifth thing which I've talked about is test patching. And it's very important for patients with sensitive skin. So instead of lathering on your skincare, what you do is just take a tiny bit, and if you're ultra sensitive, just use a little test patch just in front of your ear. If you can tolerate that, use more the next night. And certainly, if you do have any redness, burning, stinging, irritation, or flaking, use less. Use that with a moisturizer or moisturize after using your actives. So remember, simplify to amplify. Okay, so now we come to five don'ts. So what don't you do for sensitive skin? The first thing you do is try not to exfoliate. Yes, you can actually use physical exfoliators, for example, a, um, a mitt, but you can use chemical exfoliators as well, such as salicylic acid. Yes, I know salicylic acid is anti-inflammatory, but you have ultra-sensitive skin, especially if you have a rosacea or atopic dermatitis or even sebdermatitis, you want to exfoliate less. Or if you must exfoliate, start with a very low concentration. Instead of using high strength of salicylic acid, use something like a 0.5% salicylic acid scrub. The second don't is actually uh, try to avoid high concentrations of actives. And this will lead to me discussing why people get sensitive skin, but it's the high concentration of actives nowadays in marketing, which leads to sensitive skin. So instead of using a retinol, which is 2.0, you might want to consider using something which is much less, 0.2 or 0.5. So 
try to avoid things like high concentrations of vitamin C's, which we have discussed before, and try to actually use products which are more inert in your skin. So things like azalic acid, for example, is a good inert product compared to something like hydroquinone, which can be irritating. So speak to your dermatologist in regards to what they recommend for your skin. Okay, the other thing I'll be talking about is overcleaning. So we talked about how to actually clean and what to actually use as a cleanser, but overcleaning can lead to increased sensitivities. The reason being is that if you overclean, uh, water can be an irritant like what we discussed, and also it can hamper or actually break down the barrier. So if your skin barrier is compromised, that means there's more allergens and more irritants can actually go into the lower surface of your skin, activate cells like Langerhans cells and cause a cascade of reactions that may give you an allergy or in the worst case, both an allergy, irritancy and inflammation. So by all means, um, just be sensible with what you use. The other thing I like to talk about is chemical peels. If you have sensitive skin, chances are you won't tolerate chemical peels, especially in high concentrations. Yes, I know chemical peels, microdermabrasion, it's offered by most dermatologists and it's offered even in um, beauty salons and aesthetic practices. But be sensible, chemical peels can actually worsen your skin, even if you're using low concentration. So even things like alpha hydroxy acids, which would be like glycolic acid, lactic acid, and even anti-inflammatory creams are supposed to help, including salicylic acid. If you really want to have a peel, by all means start very low, right? And you've got to actually warn the person who, well, the person who's actually doing the peel should actually know better enough when they actually see your skin and when they react to terminate the peel. For example, if an AHA peel, like a glycolic acid, 20 to 30% can be left on for two to three minutes in someone with normal skin, Someone with sensitive skin, you might want to neutralize the peel at 30 seconds, 40 seconds, or when your skin actually reacts. So if you see marked erythema or redness or inflammation, terminate the peel then. My advice is that there are far, far safer alternatives compared to chemical peels. And the last of all, I like to give a really good hint, um, and we see this a lot for rosacea patients, is that Especially in winter, uh, patients take long, hot showers. If you take long, hot showers, yes, I know, it feels good, but what happens is that the humidity from the steam actually draws your water out. So it increases what we call trans-epidermal water loss, or TWL, and that's bad. So if you can take, a, I'm not saying have a cold shower, but take a quick, cool shower, something like two to three minutes. If you have sensitive skin as well, Hair washing is very important because instead of letting the um, uh, bubbles and suds drop from your hair, um, try to lean backwards and make sure that it doesn't have contact with your skin because even shampoos can, contains um, chemicals, for example, surfactants like um, sodium lauryl sulfate. So quick cool showers um, and be really accurate with your hair washing, guys. Okay, I hope that helps. So let's move on to how dermatologists approach sensitive skin. If we see a dermatologist, dermatologists would actually take you back to basics. So remember, I always say slow in, fast out, or simplify to amplify. Now, dermatologists would actually read the products you're using and will take you off that. Yeah, and they'll, they'll give you a simple cleanser, a simple regime, a simple moisturizer, and if your skin's markedly irritated, believe it or not, most of us would actually ask you to stop your sunscreen just for a couple of days. Dermatologists also prescribe uh, corticosteroids. We're not talking about long-term, we're talking about short-term. So if you have, uh, for example, uh, dermatitis, eczema, uh, rip-roaring, rosacea, we may actually use anti-inflammatories, both in the, in the sense of antibiotic tablets, like doxycycline short course, or we might actually use a topical corticosteroid or calcineurin inhibitor, think things like tacrolimus or pimacrolimus, but we use that for a short time to actually control your skin. We also give you, uh, like I said, anti-inflammatory antibiotics. And that's very important for things like perioral dermatitis because inflammation of your skin uh, can manifest as steroid-induced rosacea, which is basically lumps and bumps around your eyes, around your mouth, that's what's called a muzzle rash, and around your nose. So getting off all of those products and also importantly, try to actually minimize your makeup use. And dermatologists will always say, hey, you can actually leave your skin to breathe two, three times a day 
it, your skin will love you for it, yeah? So if you have to use makeup, try to use a paraben-free makeup, something like mineral makeup. My recommendations, Jane and Eridol, they make a good makeup. The second thing dermatologists do is they actually diagnose. So we try to figure out why you have sensitive skin. Is it an irritant contact dermatitis? Is it an allergic contact dermatitis? Is it things like uh, eczema, seborrheic dermatitis, perioral dermatitis, rosacea? So we like to give you a diagnosis because that uh, can give you a prognosis. And the best type of prognosis is if we can identify both an irritant, but most importantly, an allergen. How do dermatologists actually investigate that? Well, we use what's known as patch testing. So patch testing we use is basically, we call it the European standards uh, battery. So we'll put, not batteries, but we'll put a battery of um, uh, chemicals on your back and we'll read it at 24, 48, and for delayed reactions, 72 hours. And for really unusual cases, we actually use light, both the UVA, UVB, and visible light to actually figure out whether you've got a photoallergic reaction. The majority of patients only need to be tested for using the standard European battery. And if you have cosmetics, which you frequently use, they will test you for that as well. And if we can find an allergen, and the most common allergens include parabens, include surfactants, and include preservatives. So if we can eliminate that, uh, as well as fragrance, we can actually improve your rash. So that is, a, I guess, the best case scenario. And uh, if we find out an allergen, you can actually have a um, sheet which gives you the chemical there and what to use and what to avoid. So that's the best case scenario. For cases like rosacea, yes, you've got to manage that lifelong. And with rosacea, it's not just the laser, it's not us prescribing antibiotics, it's actually avoiding your flare factors. And each one will have different flare factors, sunlight, alcohol, hot spicy foods, stress, change of weather. So within reason, if you can avoid those um, flare factors, your skin will get better. Okay, last of all, skin rejuvenation in patients with sensitive skin. So we browse through it and um, I say, I don't like, I personally don't like to use chemical peels because I think they're a recipe for disaster, especially if you have um, super sensitive skin, especially in rosacea patients. So what do I like using? I like using lasers and there's certain type of lasers which I like using, including um, the Q-switch laser. So the Q-switch laser can be used in a setting called dermal toning. So it's basically five to seven sessions over a period of 10 to 15 weeks. And with that, we use a long wavelength, a 1064 uh, nanometer wavelength, and we actually treat your skin to actually stimulate collagen, right? So that's a very safe uh, modality because that will not flare up your sensitive skin. Another one of my favorites is to actually use laser genesis. Laser genesis uses the same wavelength, 1064, but we use a vascular laser. So laser genesis is great for patients with generalized inflammation, redness, and background rosacea. Other lasers I like using, especially in rosacea patients or those with reactive skin, uh, is the pulse dye laser. So a pulse dye laser for the 595, and there are certainly the older series like the V-beam, but now they've got the V-beam primer, which can use the 595 and the 1064 wavelength. So with these lasers, downtime is minimum. The chance of a flare up for your um, skin is actually very, very low. In fact, vascular lasers can even help certain conditions like rosacea by decreasing inflammation and also decreasing the amount of blood vessels you have. Other treatments which I like include low level laser emission devices, so LLEDs. The wavelengths I use, 633 and 810. These wavelengths are anti-inflammatory. So these are not lasers, but they use um, a spectrum of light, which is very specific using light emitting diodes. And usually you do need about two to four sessions over a period of two to three weeks, and that can calm down inflamed skin. Other modalities I use include IPL and BBL. So IPL stands for intense pulse light. It's not a laser, but it uses filter. And BBL stands for broadband light. This is a modality which can be really useful for patients with sensitive skin, stinging, flushing, blushing, and rosacea. Fractional lasers treat only a fraction of the skin and not the entire surface. Certainly fractional lasers, which put a lot of heat in, such as CO2 lasers and erbium, can actually flare up your skin. But most dermatologists will actually recognize that you have sensitive skin. If we are going to use an erbium or CO2 laser, we'll take that into consideration, treat you, understand it's gonna be a flare up, manage the flare up with anti-inflammatory antibiotics, uh, 
low laser emission devices and also vascular laser. So it's not a problem at all. A more safe way to approach things is to use non-ablative lasers. And the wavelength of choice I like is actually the 1927. Fraxel makes really great lasers, so the 1927 as a thulium driven laser is excellent, or the 1927 using clear and brilliant, which is a diode driven laser. So this, these lasers can actually be set according to your skin sensitivity. So someone with ultra sensitive skin, I might use something like five millijoules, four to seven passes, and someone with resistant skin, I might use the maximum of 20 millijoules up to 20 passes. So these can all be tailor-made according to your skin type. Guys, I hope you find that um, discussion useful. Um, it's certainly a big topic to cover. I cover little snippets on Instagram, so if you are bored, if you want to learn something, certainly it's the skin school section of Instagram where you'll learn little things at least two to three times a week. So if you like this video, please by all means hit that like button. If you like to subscribe, by all means subscribe. I do one educational video every week. I'll see you next week and thanks for watching.